Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's, it's very nice to see all of you feeling good. I want to officially welcome you. And uh, personally, should I say personally welcome you to batch six? Uh, it's, it's, it takes quite a lot of job for you to be here. And I hope the journey ahead because gets it more sweet, more smoother. So this morning, uh, the theme for our discussion with, as we all know, Tel Academy requires uh, as a technical aspect and a technical aspect, which I'm sure this morning we've already had uh, uh, a, a few sessions for a technical uh, for a technical aspect. Is that correct? So this morning. We'll be, we'll be talking about uh, the ideal real-world jobs, as it is expected that after the technical section, after you, 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 you've been equipped with all the technical skills, you are expected to go out there, secure the job, and put yourself out to the world and show what you are capable of doing. So basically, this morning we'll be talking about the real-world jobs and I'll be putting you through uh, the type of job you need to you need to secure what it takes to get your ideal job and how to stand out among various candidates. And I let me just share my screen a bit. Let's get started. So, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be talking about real-world job, and you need to understand what it, what it takes to, to to have an idea and a very real-world. You just after your uh, after your technical training, we don't expect you to just go and get or secure any type of job. We expect you to secure uh, a very good. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Usman, can you hear me clearly? Please signify if you can hear me clearly. Signify by leaving up your hand if you can hear me clearly. Before we get started. Uh, Sadiq, I can hear you clearly. Maybe someone else can say if the sound is not good in the end. Okay, okay. I can see you. Okay. So let me just fix my sound a bit. Okay. Can you all hear me clearly now? So, as I was saying, this morning we'll be talking about real world jobs, and I'll walk you through what it takes uh, to be to have, to have an ideal job and what it takes you to secure and get your real job. We'll not only be talking about what it takes to get a real world job, but we'll also talk about how to be successful and how to successfully propagate your new role. So, First and foremost, I would like you to know that when you see a job or a job advert relating to the skills you have, you just don't go in and apply. You just don't see it as an opportunity because you are looking for an like, euro. You, you just don't see it as an opportunity to just go and get a new euro. So before you get a job or before you look for a particular job, it is expected that you have some features you look you look forward to and when we talk about these features we're taking our features that we at Stan Academy we consider them ideal for you so when you are looking for a job we expect that 
you look for a job that requires your human intelligence and skills. For instance, in an academy, at the end of your technical training, you should be equipped with uh, technical skills and machine learning, data engineering, and a lot of others. So we don't expect you to go and look, start looking for job roles in hospitality management. We don't expect you to go and look for job roles in mass communication. We don't expect you to look for job roles that are not related to what you have been equipped with. So we expect you to look for job roles that require your particular skills, that require the skills you have, that require your intelligence in such a way that if you get a particular role, you will add value to the organization. So what we also expect, what we also characterize as a real world job is a job that pays on average at $600. As you understand, that 10 academic finances structure is that you pay $100 during the technical training, and afterward, when you get uh, your job, you will balance up the $900 instrumentally. So in order for you to be able to balance or uh, to, to make this balance, you need to get a job that will be paying you a significant amount such that if you remove uh, the balance, such that if you remove the payment for 10 Academy, you know you still have a lot more to earn. A pay that would uh, discomfort you or would put the contract of 10 Academy in this trade. So you need to at least look for a job, at least minimally. You need to look for a job within the range of 500, 600, 700, 800, 900 dollars above. So here we consider you looking for a job averaging 600 dollars monthly. You know, yes, this is a very good job. You also need to focus on uh, work flexibility. By work flexibility, I mean, I mean uh, you need to consider the fact that job Google gives you opportunity. To, to 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 navigate between tasks. You don't need to. It is not advisable you go look for a job or a role that has a very rigid structure. By rigid structure, I mean maybe a job has like 70, 70 hours per week, morning to night, every every second to your only job. No, we don't advise you to do that. We advise you to look for a job that please give you flexibility over yourself, gives you time to rest, give you time. To Time for your personal development and your personal personal well-being. A job that gives you schedule control. Yes, maybe you're supposed to have a role at a particular task by 8 a.m. and your jobs, your job gives you that opportunity to say, okay, yes, I can do it this time, I'll do it later. In as far as it it uh it comports you on the organization and its productivity. And you also need to go for a job that has a good potential. A job role, a job role that uh, while you're doing it, you, you tend to grow professionally, personally, intellectually. A job role that gives you the ability to, to improve your skills. Not just a, a, a particular role that uh, you just learn static, you don't learn, you don't learn anything new. You just remain where you are, you don't improve. No. So we advise you that you get a particular rule that, that improve that, that gives you the chance to improve yourself. So those are the kind of job work we advise. Also, we also it is very it is very important for you to know the kind of jobs that are suitable for you and the jobs that are not suitable for you. Okay, it seems most uh, most can't hear me clearly, so I need to adjust my speaker. Okay, is is it, is it clear right now? So now let's talk about the jobs that are suitable and the jobs that are not suitable. We advise you that you get a job that is well suit that is very suitable for 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 you. We advise you to look for an entry level role, you don't advise you to run for a middle level role or manage managerial role. No, your the skills you're being equipped with at 10 academy requires that in the end you'll be equipped with the very good skills 
very, tech, very technical, skill, technical skills uh, to give you the opportunity to successfully propagate at a junior level position or at an entry level position in either local or international organization. So your focus while looking for a job is a local or an international organization and a junior or entry level role. I hope you understand that. However, we also uh, advise that uh, you don't go and look for a job that is not on a global level. You need to always, always understand that the training you are getting from 10th Academy is at an international level and a world-class training. So uh, you need to go to a search. Having been equipped with such training, you don't need to go and look for jobs which are not uh, which which are not up to the level of the organization you're looking for. So you need to go look for jobs that are at, you need to look for jobs that, that that are up to the standard, jobs that has to do with your position, that has to do with the skills you require, not jobs that do not relate to what you're being taught. Also, let me walk you through to how to search for a job. While you're searching for a job, while you're searching for a job, it is very important for you to identify a very genuine work, uh, genuine job opportunity. You don't need to go on, you don't need to go and start searching for jobs which are not ideal. For example, as a junior engineer, you you're going to search for a job of maybe uh, hundred hundred thousand dollars is is not ideal and it's not realistic. So at such we advise you to search for job, which you know, yes, looking at this job, you know, yes, this is legit, and yes, I can do it, and yes, it's uh, my skill sets will enable me to successfully propagate with this job. So for for search, we advise. To so identify a job for which you have a decent probability of being fit. Uh, the angel position with, with the skills you 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 you, you obtain your program skills your data engineering or machine learning engineering skills that you uh you can equip it at 10 academy uh i advise you to go for such job as you have a very decent chance of being recruited however while you're uh, while while uh most recruiters publish job role they have seen some job advice you know whether you have a chance of being recruited or not. For instance, if a job will require that you have like 15 years managerial skills, uh, and you have like 15 years managerial skills, and you as an entry level engineer, you will go on to apply. You yourself, your instinct should tell you that you have a very high chance of, you have a high chance of, of not getting employed. You also, in, in searching and applying for jobs, you also need to establish your career goals. You also need to know what you're looking for. What you by what you're looking for, I mean, you should be okay. You should be able to say maybe in the next 10 to 15 years, I want to be a renowned machine learning engineer that will be known, uh, that will be known throughout. Uh, within the, the region of West Africa or Central Africa or East Africa. As such, you have already laid down your career goals. And with this, laying down your career goals will enable, will enable you to be able to look for jobs that will serve as a stepping stone towards achieving that goal. So as such, if your goal is to become uh, a maybe a renowned engineer in the future, then then it is very it is advisable for you to to narrow your search down towards a position that will enable you to achieve that goal. For instance, while you're searching for job, for instance, while you're searching for job, you should use keywords. By keywords, I understand. I mean, if you be able to use start, you should be able to use specific string. This string that will enable your searching easier. For example, while you're searching for a job, you should you can use junior machine engineer, remote engineer, machine learning engineer, engine entry level 
machine learning position, a lot of them just make sure you break your job stack into key screens such that it will uh, enable your searching easy. Also, while searching for job, uh, you should also understand what is meant by gap analysis. There are certain gaps within you yourself if you know, oh, I can't fill this position. I have this, uh, this is, I, I, I do not possess, I do not possess this qualification. You can't recruit me because of this. We all know where we are lack behind. So as such, you need to carry out a very good gap analysis. And by gap analysis, I mean a technique that allows you to assess your current state and your ideal state. Let's say for instance, you're looking towards securing your dream job. And you know your dream job requires, uh, requires a few skill sets you don't have. You should be able to sit down and analyze, oh, yeah, I'm not doing properly well in this area. I don't possess the skills. You should be able to analyze, sit down, analyze, and be able to work towards bridging your, your, your gaps. However, while you're doing gap analysis, a gap analysis usually comes with an action plan. By action plan, I mean, okay, you, you know your current state, you know the state you want to, you, you want to get to, so definitely, you should, in order for you to bridge this gap, you should carry out an action plan. And by action plan, you need to jot out, okay, what are the things I need to do in order to bridge this gap? So this will enable you uh, uh, to improve your profile, your standard, and enable you to stand a very good chance of securing the, the job you want to get. Um, Sadiq, sorry to disturb you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I can hear you. You can adjust your, what can I say, your speaker, because I can hear you clearly, but I'm having a few people who are saying they're having a, a problem with um, hearing you. So I'm not sure okay. if the problem is in the end or... Okay, I'll try and adjust, but I'm speaking clearly, and my speaker is even placed close to my mouth, so... <laughs> Maybe I just uh, turn on my camera so you can even see how I'm facing my speaker. Okay. So, anybody not hearing me clearly, there's definitely a problem from their end. But I'll try, very, uh, try my possible best to become more audible. So, as, so I was saying, talking about gap analysis, is that uh, gap analysis is basically a technique where you use in order to analyze your current state and the state you want. So basically, in trying to analyze the state, you need to have an action plan. An action plan that will tell you, okay, yes, this is this is the state which I am, this is the state I want. An action plan is that plan that will give you a very will give you a clear will give you a close view of what you want to achieve and will give you a better way of how to achieve it. So that is basically what gap analysis is. So talking about gap analysis, when after you've done your gap analysis, okay, you've identified that this is the gap, uh, this is the skills I don't have, this is uh, this is the requirements I don't have for a particular job. You you've been able to identify the gaps. There are definitely some gaps you can't fill. Let's see, for instance, maybe a job will require that you have few assistances. As a graduate of 10 academy training, we, are, we, 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 we expect that you are an African and by that nature, automatically, you do not possess a US citizenship. So it is very, it is very constant that you can't fill that gap. All the other gaps include having a PhD, although we might have a few trainees who possess a PhD, which give them a competitive edge. However, most of the trainees do not have and cannot fill this gap. So the, the, what you need to understand is you need to be able to analyze and figure out those gaps you can't fill. So you don't need to force yourself to fill in this gap. Instead, you need to go back and look at your CV and look for how, how you will strengthen your CV, package your CV, and, and ensure it entices the recruiter. Also, 
Let me give you a, a quick overview of how gap analysis works. Talking about gap analysis, you need to describe the state which you are. So the state which you are, okay, let's say, okay, my programming skills is at, is at an intermediate level, okay, machine engineering, I'm very good in that, this, I'm good in that, this, I'm good in that, I'm good in this, I'm good in that. You've been able to identify the space and uh, the, 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 how, how would I put it? The, the aspects which you are good. And you also look at the aspect which you want to be. Okay, I want to be uh, one of the, the most sound junior engineer. I want to hold one of the most prominent entry level position. That is what you need to do. So by that, you have described which you are. Then the next thing for you is you need to identify these gaps. So when identifying this gap, that's where you need to know that there are some gaps you can fill and there's some gaps you can't fill. Example of those gaps you can feel are what I just mentioned earlier, like maybe requiring a uh, US passport, requiring uh, a PhD, requiring a state security number, requiring a driving license, which obviously most people don't have. Then after that, after you've been able to identify those gaps, you also need to describe those gaps. Okay, by describing it, okay, this is what they want, this is what they want, can I get it? If I can get it, how long will it take me to get it? And if you can't get it, then you look, you look forward and get to, you look forward towards getting an ideal role which fits or suits your qualifications. Also, uh, having having identified and described the gaps, you also need to look for the factors and remedies. By factors, uh, I mean. You need to use the difference between the current and future states to come up with remedy and action plan to tackle. To tackle uh, the action gap. So basically, what are the factors uh, responsible for for this gap? You need to list all these factors for gap identified in the specific objective and relevant. And the remedies, you need to mix out all the possible remedies for bridging this gap. That is a very simple technique for you to be able to bridge this gap. And if you cannot bridge this gap, it means this world is not for you. Moving forward, we'll be talking about how to carry out a good gap analysis. Carrying out a good gap analysis, I mean, you should decide on your skills. You know yourself better than me. Uh, trainers know you. You are in the best position to say, okay, I have these skills. Okay, I have these skills. These skills, I don't have it. These skills, I have it, but I know how to improve it. So you need to identify and describe your key skills. Then, after uh, identifying and describing your skills, skills, you need to rank them. Let's say, okay, in programming, I'm good at programming with Python. That is my greatest strength. You rank it as one. I'm good in this. You rank it as two. Then you list out all the things you are good in. Then you give them a very good ranking. Then you, after you look out for jobs and you look for the requirements, you learn you learn the skills uh, which they require. Then you then you like you compare them and say, okay, I have these skills. This is my top skills. This is the top skill we require in this job. By looking at that, you be able to say, okay, I don't have any gap in applying to this job. I have, a, I have a weakness in applying to this job, and that will be, be able to successfully apply and get an ideal job. So, for this week, we call what we will be expecting out of you is we will be giving you a career exercise uh, as, as, as a way to ensure or to practicalize what has been said. So, what we expect you to do is to go online, identify three jobs which you'll be applying to. By identifying three jobs, we mean by the end of your training with 10 Academy, you should be ready to take up a job that will require an expert. So now, what we expect you to do is to go on and identify three jobs. And those three jobs should follow the guidelines that are stated here. Let me quickly open the guidelines so you can see. Okay, I don't need to open the guideline. Let me just give you a brief overview of what the guidelines say. Once you check the guideline, which has been published in your script in your training folder, the guideline basically says uh, you need to look for a job that is within your skills, 
which you can successfully propagate in and you need to look, uh, go on and look for the job in a certain uh, uh, search engine or job search engine like LinkedIn, uh, my jobs and all. So you just need to go there and look for certain jobs and run them by pulling all the guidance that are listed. And this exercise, we expect you to uh, we expect you to put your right up in three to four pages. So having put your right up in three to four pages, uh, we expect you to put in a very good report form that it is very readable, it's clear and concise. And we expect you to go submit it to the PDF and to be submitted to the Google Classroom. That is the task for this exercise, which I hope because it is very clear. And in the end, we expect you that by Friday, you should be able to submit these tasks to your Google Classroom. So if you have any current, uh, if you have any question regarding this, please, uh, you, can, you have the floor to ask the question, so we can provide more clarity to what you don't understand. Yeah, hello. Uh, I think I just have one question, if I may. Okay. Please go on. Okay, thanks. Uh, I, I, is this uh, material going to be shared with us? Because I think there's a, uh, a guideline in which we are supposed to. Yes, yes, yes. See if you look for. Okay, currently the material has been published into the, your trainees folder. If you go there, you find the material. However, after this meeting, I'm going to do a link to the training to, to the folder on, on the Slack channel. And if you, I'll also be sharing this PPT with you that contains the link of the guidelines. So I hope we are clear on that. And obviously, if you have any questions regarding this tax, you can easily go to that guideline, which, uh, is clearly outlined and self-explained. But if you need any further questions, you can reach out to me personally or my colleague, Maureen. Are you okay with that? I'm sorry, yeah. I was out. Can you, can you just tell me where I can find the guideline? My internet connection was out, I'm really sorry. Okay. Where, where can you find what? The guideline. Okay. I'll be sharing this uh, uh, this uh, PPT, this presentation with you after the after this session. Okay. You, can, you can find a link to the guideline on it. But uh, also, you can also go to your trainees folder. A link has been provided, and I will also provide a link to the document on the Slack channel after this uh, session. Awesome! Thank you very much. I'm really sorry for the internet connection. Ah, uh, no problem. No problem. Okay, so thanks, thanks. can we have any other person, any other person to see what you do not understand? Or uh, if you have any suggestion, clearly, please bring it up. Yeah, so Sadiq, thank you so much for, for the session, for explaining to us if if anyone has a suggestion or needs some clarity on something or we just need to be explained something that you didn't understand you can go ahead and raise your hand and you can ask us yeah okay uh since you don't have questions, maybe you didn't, you did have, okay, Josiah says it's clear to you. Okay, your yeah, honor, if you have a question, please unmute your speaker and please speak. Hello? Hi, your honor. No, I was just reading the, the guideline. And there is this, uh, uh, in, uh, okay, sorry, let me check it. On the task, it says find at least three jobs that you can take up to November 15. Yeah. And it says each position uh, 
must be online job posting. I understand that, but I don't understand. There should be no links to google.com. What does it mean? Sorry, come again. You're, you're not so clear. No, no, no. Okay, how about now? Okay, some are coming again. Okay, I've been reading the guideline. Okay. And uh, which states that we, that we should uh, look for three word drop, uh, really word droppers. And the drop that we find that we are looking for must be uh, currently available, uh, a position that we want to pursue. Uh, and then if it's a remote work, it's okay. What I don't understand is each position must, I mean, what is this no link to google.com? Can you read the guideline and then elaborate on that? Okay, can I just, let me go through the guideline so I have a clearer picture of what you're saying. All right, it's on task number one, okay? Thank you. Okay, you honest? Your question is on, I don't seem to get the question clearly. Maybe you can just type a question in the chat box and I'll go to it and provide the clarity to it. But in the meantime, Adijad, you will have the floor. Please only to speak. Okay, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, how are you? How are you all doing? So my question is, uh, um, it's I'm not, uh, it's actually two, yeah, actually two questions. The first one, okay. the first one is, um, the, the slides that you, you add up during the presentation, okay. <clears throat> the exercise slide that talks about we should identify three, mm -hmm. is it three or four jobs that meets and then we should write three, about three, them three. in three to four pages. So what, what are we going to write about that? Are those things in the guidelines already? Okay. The tax is basically... No, they are not they are in the guideline actually, but they are not in the presentation slide, but I explained it while I was speaking. What we expect is that you find at least three jobs you can take off by the next three months, all the jobs should have uh, an online job posting for each position. They should be currently seeking, they should be available and seeking placement. And you should make your submission uh, to Google Classroom. So if you go to the, through the guideline, uh, you should have a very clear picture of it. So basically, our contribution for this tax is to be limited to data engineering, data engineering tax. And you should understand that you should look for jobs that are actively recruited. Please don't look for jobs maybe the deadline has closed or the deadline uh, is in the future, which you have to wait for a certain time before you apply. And we've also provided uh, a few links in the, in the tutorial guideline, like the LinkedIn, Indeed, more stuff, that's a job where you can get, uh, uh, where you can actively search for jobs using the guideline we provided. I hope you're clear on that now. Okay. Yeah. The second one is not related to what okay. uh, the presentation you, you gave us, but um, it's something I've been hearing, and I just want to confirm if it's if it's if it's something worth practicing. Some people say you. Okay. It's, it's not just about applying for all the jobs you see. It's better to have like three to seven companies you are following. That uh, then you should do what you have to do to match up to their to their standard. Is that a good okay. practice? That's 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 a very good question to ask, Adija. Currently. Well, I would advise you that since your 10 academic training uh, is in your aspects, maybe data engineering, machine learning, engineering, and you have a few questions you 
you have a few organizations, you are, maybe you are belonging to work with them, you said, oh, I want to work with this organization. But in the past, you do not meet the requirement. However, if 10 academies has been able to give you the opportunity or match your skills, be able to get to that target organization or that you know, ideal organization, then you can go for it if you have the chance and you believe you have the chance of getting the job. However, if the organization you dream of, or maybe you identify the need, and, you, and your chances of getting the job are not, are not decent, it's not as if you are applying and you know you can't get. So what I will advise you is go and, get, go and apply for the job. You believe match your skill sets. You can't be pro you can't be proficient on Python, and uh, a job will require uh, somebody that is that is that is, that is very proficient in C plus, which you don't know, and you go on to apply. I would advise you. So basically, the key aspect is for you to apply and identify the jobs which match your skill set, where you know you can stand out. Does that answer the question? Okay. Have? Yes, yes, it does. That actually makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No problem. You're welcome. Do you have any other questions, suggestions? You can just please signify by raising up your hand because we still have 30 minutes more on this session. Okay, so uh, Johannes has just texted me and he was asking okay. that when you go to the first task, um, where okay. it says no links to google.com, what exactly does that mean? No links to google.com. Yeah, it's like uh, the third. Um, oh, 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 okay. Like the third bullet, no links to google.com. What we're going to say is if you touch on, let me give you a clearer picture of that. If you search for jobs on on Google.com, maybe you know Google is a search engine. You go on to search for job. Automatically, Google uh, redirects and clicks of jobs that are related to them or to their organization first, which most times are very much competitive, or sometimes they bring out ads of jobs which are not ideal, which are not realistic. So we don't want you to bring jobs that are related to Google. We don't want you to bring up the Google jobs. We don't want you to bring up jobs you searched on Google. We want you to go and bring up jobs you search on search engine or job uh, platforms like LinkedIn, uh, like Indeed, all those recruitment sites. Those are where we expect you to go and look jobs for. We don't expect you to look for jobs on Google. We don't expect you to go and search for jobs on Google. That's what we don't want. And we don't expect you to bring up jobs that are related to Google. That's basically it. I hope somewhere is clear. It's clear. Okay, okay, okay. That's nice. It's good to see that you understand the law. However, I am really glad if you can ask a few more questions. And maybe in absence of none, I can just uh, ask individual questions to see if you have a very clear picture of what I've explained. What do you think? Okay. Uh, I did that somehow and to a few other people who asked questions, we were very glad you did ask each signify you've been following. However, uh, let me just walk let me just walk you through a few more uh, expectations from the tax. So apply for remote work also. If during your search you discover that a job has the remote job, we can we advise you to please stick up that. You don't need to, you don't basically need to to to, to stick to on site or hybrid jobs. You can pick up remote jobs. Uh, it should basically be 
data engineering but however if you see a job of maybe like machinery engineering or machine engineering which you feel you can do it you can cope your qualified please list them out and for each job in your tutorial i expect you to highlight the name of the company the title the position you're applying for uh the team in the organization you'll be joining the link to the online job posting uh the address of the job maybe it is in the uk us uh, tanzania Nairobi, anywhere please include the link the application opening and closing the uh the requirements the skills they are looking for uh if they have any particular salary they are yeah, they are, they, are, they, are, they are going to offer and just make sure everything falls within three to four pages. And we expect you to submit uh, later by Friday. I hope that's clear. Yes, uh, thanks, Sadiq. So I'd also like to mention that we also have a careers exercise. Um, it's called peer mentoring, and it's also found in the folder, uh, trainees folder. And you can go through it because we also have another session to just guide you. That will be on Thursday, same time as today. So you can just go ahead and have a look at it because um, there's some work that you are needed to do and the deadline is on Saturday as opposed to this one, which is on Friday. Yeah. So that when we are having the sessions, you guys are well acquainted and you can just have, you can ask questions on what you're not sure about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think that's a great idea. Since the session is coming up later on Thursday and we'll be required to submit on Saturday, I think they have limited time to catch up. So while you are uh, uh, visiting the guideline tutorial, the guideline material for these particular real world jobs, uh, it is advisable for you to also visit the guideline for the other task so you get familiar with it such that on Thursday, while the tutorial is on, you'll be asking questions or you might even be happy done through the task. You can just come on Thursday to ask questions and uh, that will enable you to properly uh, uh, answer the uh, perform well for the task. So, Molly, do you have any other things to add? Um, I'd also like to just ask, um, does anyone of you understand what you are required to do by the raise of your hands? I, I, I see someone in the first to raise his hand. You, know, you, you definitely understand what's successful because you've asked a few questions. And I was like, I'm looking forward to, to your submission. I do know, um, I think it's important that you guys are learning what exactly you're supposed to do, especially on the career side, because at the end of the day, we are all learning so that you can get a job, you know. And in order for you to get a job, you, you will need to know how to get it. And how to get a good job is also a process. You don't want to find yourself, uh, you finish the, the, what do you call this? The, what, training. the training. Then afterwards, you don't know what to do. You don't know how to go about it. You don't know your, your CV is not up to date. It's not perfected. Your skills, you don't know how to express yourself. So with the career, careers um, exercises and the sessions that we have are basically to just help you and just prepare you for the the world the job the job world that you're getting into after you finish the training it's good to just be prepared and know that after this i can go ahead and i will know where to apply i will know who to look for uh, which organizations i want because i'm so sure uh, when well you're, well you're applying to be trained, you had in mind the organizations that you wanted to work for. You have dream of organizations. So uh, basically, 
careers um, exercises and the sessions that we have are just to, to train you and to just carve you so that if you want your dream job, you will know how to go about it, okay? So we, we just, at Ten Academy, we want you to get the skills, the knowledge, and also get the right job, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, that, that's well said, Morgan. Because in the end, if you, yeah, you have been well equipped with all the technical skills and you're finding it very difficult to get a job, it's just like a waste. Because I imagine going having a training of several months and in the end, there's nothing to show for it. So you need, while you are putting, while you are, while you are getting that technical skills, you also need to work very important on this uh, career exercise because it's not just about the much you get from the career exercise, but it's about what it's about yourself, about what you will earn. Obviously, in in the end, all the skills you are acquiring is just to to to, to get a means a means of living. So we advise you to. Do. To prepare yourself very well to be able to get that ideal job and your ideal job should follow all the guidelines that are stated in the career exercise so please do well visit the career exercise and please do not hesitate to ask me questions me or morgan on slack i can drop my email in the chat box if you have any questions please do reach out to us we are always available to help okay so does anyone have any insights or questions or any suggestions or anything you just want to say before we call it a day? Fiseha, is your hand raised for something? No, I, I just kept it raised. Uh, okay, so thanks. Just asked, yeah, if you're interested. And now, now I'm on it. I just want to say this is a very underrated and very valuable uh, session. Uh, I think it's really important to figure this out. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for saying hi. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, um, you're all doing the training so that you get a job. And after the training, what happens next? How do you get the job? You also need soft skills, you know? So please. Um, yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like the end product. Yes. You know, we're, we're actually learning the process and we don't know how to make the end products right. Yeah. I think it is not that much worse. It's to actually pursue the training overall. So now that you you all have a very good understanding of what is required, can I I like to know how the point is going? Is it intense? Is it stressed? So we know uh, the patient is at. I see a gide has raised the hand. Maybe you can just unmute yourself and say something. A gide. Oh, I'm sorry. This 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 hand was for before when you asked if you understand the, the task. Sorry. Okay, okay. It's okay. Thanks. Uh, but you can, Egide, you can still unmute and tell us uh, what you are looking for to in this task. How how excited are you about carrying out this task? Uh, do you see yourself facing any challenges? Uh, no, uh, I don't see any challenge. Or so far, what I've been thinking of is uh, conducting a little research about like things that I really want to do in companies that fits with. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, that's that's, that's very important because, uh, as I said earlier, you need to highlight your skills and the company you're looking for to join. You need to match them to see where. Uh, and how you can successfully program it should you get to you. So I think you're on the right track and I look forward to your solution. Yeah, guys, so um, thanks, Egide. So um, you guys can just put all in the 
exercise as well with the training. And if you have any questions or you need clarity, probably after we are done with the session, you can reach out to us on Slack, Sadiq and Maureen. And yeah, thank you for coming and showing up. You guys are awesome. So have a good day. Sadiq, um, if you have anything to say. Um, I know uh, a lot of a lot of people still reach out to me regarding this uh, regarding this tutorial uh, material. I will be pasting them immediately on this Slack channel for you to please go through them. And please be reminded that the other tasks you also need to start looking to all to it as you have just tried them and start to get from it. Thank you. So in the absence of no questions, no suggestions, and no query, please do have a wonderful day. And we're looking forward to, your, to, to texting you. Uh, looking for the session on Thursday and the previous submission. I'll see you some other time.